please stand for the scripture reading. Today's scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him and clasped to his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. We really kind of began this journey back on Ash Wednesday, and I couldn't help but notice at the time that Ash Wednesday was on Valentine's Day, a day of all days, a day when God's people are called to remember that they're dust and to dust they'll return. Ash Wednesday and Valentine Day together, a day of darkness along with the days of joys, the joys of love in the same breath. And now we find ourselves on Easter Day, also falling on April 1st or April Fool's Day. Easter and Jesus' resurrection literally changed the, the trajectory of, the world, of world history. A day that we mark the final day that began on that dark Ash Wednesday, those several weeks ago, Ash Wednesday and ended in the glory of a risen Savior. I thought it was interesting how that there's really no a definite origin of April Fool's Day. Several, several theories, and one of them was in 1582 as France was beginning to change from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. The folks out in the countryside, they didn't get the memo. So they continued to celebrate the first of the year from the end of March through April the 1st was the first of the year. And they began to call those folks April Fools for they didn't get the memo that it was January the 1st. But the one I loved, there were several theories, the one I loved was around spring equinox. And it was actually the joke that Mother Nature was playing on us because we would have all four seasons in the same day. And... Uh, I thought that was one of the most that, uh, so, so people become the butt of jokes for, for many different reasons. But the biggest prank in the universe was the day that Satan knew for certain. He had dealt with Jesus. He had had him killed on the cross. He stuffed him in a hole, and he thought that that was the end. Like Ash Wednesday, Good Friday ended in darkness and hopelessness. He took the foolishness of the world. It, he thought it was all conquered. He thought it was all over. April Fool's Day looked more like Friday during that time. But thanks be to God, come Sunday morning, up from the grave he arose, victorious over death, hell, and the grave, giving each and every saint of God the power to live a victorious life in Jesus Christ. The biggest prank of all was on the day we call Resurrection Sunday when the devil thought everything was all right, everything was conquered. I remember my cousin Terry, who later became a pastor, but as a very young man, he was standing and testify, and he was talking about the sweetness of the Christian life. And he would say, even if there's no promise of life eternal, I want to live my life following after Jesus Christ. Or as I was re recently reminded, a quote that's been around for years, I would rather live my life for God and die to find out there was none rather than to live my life without God and to die and find out there was a God. So if Christ is alive, why aren't we more alive? Why, would, why don't we feel more alive this morning? Why are we not more excited about this beautiful Easter Sunday? 
Or as a pastor preached one day, one of the biggest problems of the church was ignorance and apathy. One of the parishioners spoke up and said, I don't know and I don't care. And I thought that was funny. I need to get a life, I know. I'm here to tell you today that Jesus stormed hell's stronghold. And he come out with the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And he come out with those keys to never be more locked up again under the bondage of death. From that time on, we no longer have to languish in this world with a death sentence hanging over our lives. But for a huge number of people, prison is a way of life, being locked in to that place of, of not having a life. I'm not talking about a physical prison, but a spiritual dwelling that keeps us from being all that God has called us to be. There's a lot more prisoners in our communities and our country today than are what are, what are counted in the state and federal penitentiaries. We're just locked up. We're just as locked up. We're just in as much bondage. Let me name some of those prisons that we find ourselves in. And what is your prison this morning? What has you locked up? What has you from being all that God has called you to be? We have prisoners of poverty, prisoners of ignorance, prisoners of rage, prisoners of neglect, prisoners of addiction, prisoners of hate, prisoners of despair, prisoners of loneliness and fear and prisoners of unforgiveness, prisoners of our past. I was reminded just recently as I've dealt with some issues with some folks just recently, and I was reminded that our past was designed and meant to be a lesson, not a life sentence. All these prisons and the hundreds of others that stunts our growth to be a child of God and what we're called to be. That's why Easter is so special. That's why Easter is, is such marvelous, great news. Jesus' resurrection is the ultimate prison break. Jesus breaks free from death, the bondage that holds us back. He breaks the chain of sin and condemnation that stripes our back to this day. He breaks free and offers us the, to escape the solitary confinement of the hell in which we have built ourselves. Because for the more you focus inward, the more hellish your life is. You want me to show you somebody that's self-centered and thinks only of themselves? That is a prison house of hell. Like any good prison break, Jesus escaped from death, played the jailer as a fool. It was because it went undetected. You know, the best prison break is when there's several hours that go by that nobody knows you're gone so that you have time to get away. The guards, they're still standing in front of that bulky old boulder. The two Marys arrive, and as far as Marys know, and as far as those guards know, Jesus is still behind that tomb that, that blocked that big rock that blocked the exit from, from death's gateway. Neither the women nor the guards, they have any reason to believe that his body is not there. And then the angel appears as striking as lightning, dressed in robes of white. The angel flexes some divine muscle, and that great big stone that nobody could roll away has moved away, and, and they basically say, check it out. Here he is. He is not here, for he is risen. Jesus' prison break is secret no more. The angel trumpets the announcement. He's been raised from the dead. But that's not all of the angel's message. Not only is Jesus out of the tomb, he's not dead, but he's also going ahead of you to Galilee. So Jesus just isn't out of the tomb. Honey, he is on the road again, being back in our lives and, and, and directing our lives and comforting our lives and giving us direction and making sense out of the senseless parts of our lives we find ourselves in. Now that Jesus has broken out of the prison house of death, now that victory over evil and suffering has been won, the women are told to go tell this news to the disciples that the disciples may spread the news around. And once they've done that, you guys get yourself together and go to Galilee and that's where you'll meet Jesus. You'll meet the risen Christ. In our text this morning, Jesus' prison breaks, prison breaks enables the women to break free of their mourning, to break free of their fear, to break fear, free of their self-pity and their lack of faith. You see, Jesus' prison breaks. He breaks the witnesses free to be disciples. 
we are set free to be his disciples, to proclaim to the world that he is alive and well. And you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. He lives within your soul. He leads and directs you into his paths. They're free to do that. They're free to follow Jesus now in the beginning of their faith. He releases us from whatever prison we find ourselves in. What's your prison this morning? What has you bound this morning? It is, is it hatred? Is it unforgiveness? Is it pity? Is it you can't get past something that happened 20 years ago? Is the past uh, dogging your future out and, and, and delaying you from being what God has called you to be? For some, it's metal bars that keep us captive. For some, it's mental barriers that keep us captive. But whether it's bars or, or our spirit, the, this morning, we can shout to the heavens, you're free. I come here this morning simply to proclaim to you that you're free. Your prison house doors are open and nobody, nobody has the power to shut you up in the prison house of death ever again. Some of the greatest literature ever produced, ever written, was written in prison. John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress was written in prison. While in prison, he wrote to a friend and he wrote these words, For though men keep my outward man within their bolts and their bars, Yet by faith of Christ, I can mount higher than the stars. You see, whatever has you down this morning, whatever is dictating your life and whatever you want to, to, to get out of in your life, God has come to say, you're free. I've, I've opened the gates and, and you're free because of Easter morning. You can mount higher than the stars. Even though, even though you fight bolts and bars, don't imprison the gift of life that you've received. This morning you've been freed. Jesus declares to us, he says, because I live, you shall live also. The greatest escape of all times has taken place. Christ burst out of prison. Will you follow this morning? Will you follow? We're called to follow him into the joys of eternal life. Let's bow our heads just for a moment. Thank you, Jesus, that you come into my world. You took on my flesh. You walked where I walked, faced the temptations that I face. You suffered that which I suffer. So this day, we remember the great escape, that you stormed the gates of hell. You stormed it for my sake, gave the best that heaven had to offer, and you gave us life. So in Jesus' name now, I proclaim to every person here, and each and every person has their own prison house to break free from. I declare that they're free by the power and the anointing of Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. And amen.